Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, on behalf of the entire National Transportation Safety Board, we'd like to extend our condolences to the families of the victims uh, in this uh, tragedy. I'd also like to thank the first responder team, uh, Metra, BNSF, the Clarendon Hills uh, Police and Fire Department, and the adjoining uh, responding groups. Uh, they did an outstanding job. Uh, standing to my right here is Mr. Robert Aceta. He is the uh, investigator in charge and will be managing uh, the scene here. Here's what we know at this point. At uh, 818 yesterday, uh, Central Daylight Time, a eastbound Metro commuter train struck a single unit box truck. It was not a semi-tractor trailer, which has been mentioned several times. Uh, it occurred at the Prospect Avenue grade crossing. We had one fatality, which was a passenger. There were four other minor injuries, uh, two other passengers on the train, and the train crew itself, the engineer and the conductor. The train speed in this area is limited to 70 miles an hour. Um, we are in the process of downloading the event recorder off the locomotive, and we will uh, determine what the train speed actually was. Um, at those speeds, uh, it takes about a mile to stop one of these trains, and we believe that the engineer uh, started uh, maximum emergency braking well before the point of impact at the crossing because the train is only about a quarter of a mile from the point of impact. So they were attempting to slow down before they hit the, uh, the truck. The train was operating in a cab forward uh, environment, with, which means the locomotive is at the back of the train and the engineer and a passenger car, if you will, it's called a cab car, is at the opposite end. We have witness reports and uh, numerous cameras that uh, showed what happened. Um, so there was a white pickup truck that pulled in front of the box truck and they went to the tracks. And the pickup truck made a left turn at the intersection, cleared the tracks. For some reason, the truck did not move. We're not sure why. The gates, the bells went off, the gates came down and shortly after that, the driver and two passengers exited the truck just prior to the collision. At that point, the truck was struck by the cab car and pivoted around to the right side of the train looking, going forward. And the back end of the truck struck the uh, right side of the cab car and caused some extensive damage. And I think, uh, we will have some pictures for you uh, on that here uh, shortly if they haven't already been published. Um, the passenger who was fatally injured was ejected through one of the windows on the left side of the train. Now, I'd like to give you a little bit of background uh, on grade crossing incidents in general. Over the last five years, starting in 2017 and working through year to date, we've had nationally um, about 10,000 crossing incidents. About 1,000 of those were fatal, and about 3,000 roughly uh, resulted in injuries. In Illinois, um, over 500 incidents, and 81 of those were fatal. Here in DuPage County, uh, 28 incidents, six of which were fatal. And at this crossing, you had another fatal uh, incident here involving a pedestrian in 2017. One of the things we'll be looking at is signage and warning at the crossings and how the uh, gate system performed. I would also like to point out it's very unusual, very unusual for a passenger to be in, injured in a gate crossing incident. This is a high density rail environment. On average, there are 156 trains that go through here in any given day. Nearly 100 of those, nearly 100 of those are Metra commuter trains. So there's a, a high level of exposure. 
Now, for those of you who may not be familiar, the NTSB is an independent federal government agency, and our job is to look at what happened, why it happened, and to make recommendations to prevent the recurrence. Uh, we are not regulators, so uh, we will be making recommendations in that. As I mentioned before, Mr. Aceto will be a uh, leading the investigation here, and we have two teams from NTSB right now. We have a, our highway team and our railroad team, so uh, we have a lot of people here on site. The specialties will include crash worthiness, survival factors, human performance, uh, our signal group, which will look at performance of the signals on the railroad itself, and the grade crossing uh, performance. Uh, toxicology will be taken from both the, or has been taken from both the uh, driver uh, of the truck and from the engineer. We'll look at survival factors, human performance, um, and vehicle recorders. So there may be a recorder on the truck. We don't know that yet, but we'll be looking to see what that is. Of course, the locomotive has recorders and uh, there are cameras on board, both inward and outward facing, so we're able to see exactly what the engineer saw. Licensing procedures, we have uh, accident reconstruction, reconstruction specialists and, of course, uh, motor carrier people who will look at the uh, company that operated the, uh, the truck. Um, NTSB also has a tra transportation disaster assistance team which will be available to help the victims uh, of the families. Our team will be here for several days to gather perishable evidence and to uh, interview all of the witnesses and people who were involved in the uh, incident. We also have parties to the investigation. These are people who will have inside knowledge and kind of understand how things work. So the parties to the investigation at this point are BNSF, Metra, uh, the Village of Clarendon Hills, the Federal Railway Administration, uh, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, SMART, which is a, a union, stands for Sheet Metal Air Rail Transport, the Interstate Commerce Commission, and the uh, Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen. The preliminary report should be available in about two weeks, so that'll give us an early look at what's going on. There won't be any analysis in that, it's just a statement of what we know at that point. It'll take us about three months to gather the other facts along the way and then to start to begin the analysis. The final report, roughly 12 to 18 months, and uh, that will also shortly be followed by the probable cause. Again, our purpose is not to lay blame, but to look at the factors that created the crash and make recommendations to the regulators, to the operators, the railroad, the truck, what have you, to say, here's how we can prevent these kinds of circumstances from happening. NTSB looks at a lot of these uh, situations and um, both for highway and rail, we have, they've both been on our most wanted list and we have a number of uh, areas that we're looking at specifically post-crash fire and we're very interested in survival factors and in preventing the ejection of passengers through windows on uh, trains. So that will be an area that will get a lot of attention. We do not speculate on anything. Sometimes it looks like something's pretty obvious as to what transpired. Even with a camera, you look at it, but then we have to go and do some analysis to be able to be certain. So I know that you all want to have instant answers. We'll tell you what we know for sure, and we won't tell you what we don't know for sure. So uh, if we have any witnesses or if you have the opportunity to talk to somebody, uh, we have a website, uh, witness at ntsb.gov, and we would greatly appreciate if anybody has anything to contribute that will help us to uh, get to the bottom of this. So now I will take questions. If you would, um, please raise your hand, state who you are with, and um, then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, ma'am. Uh, Sabrina, CBS 2. Two questions. Is there any explanation as to why the woman was ejected from the train? 
Is there any, do we understand why she was ejected from the train? Looking at the witness marks, which means damage, that's a technical term, uh, there's a, a fair amount of damage to the right side of the train where the back end of the truck hit. Uh, tremendous amount of force there. And so obviously that force translated into uh, propelling the victim through the window. We don't know exactly where she was sitting. We think she may have been sitting on the right side of the train, but we will determine that uh, at a future time. And your second question? The second question, do we know if there's construction that might be ongoing on the tracks had any impact to why that truck couldn't get over? That's going to be one the, great question. Do we know why the truck couldn't get off the tracks? I think that's probably one of the key questions that we have. We don't know if Obviously, there's some construction going on, but vehicles seem to be moving back and forth across the tracks. Um, we don't know why the truck did not move. That's going to be one of the things that we have to discover. So, yes, sir. Mayor Glass of ABC7, uh, is there anything you could tell us from conversations with the three men that were in that truck at the time as to what had occurred before or what happened leading up to the crash? So the question is about the uh, three people in the truck, the driver and the two passengers, and what was going on inside the truck. Um, our people, I believe the police department, have already interviewed them. Our people will be interviewing them uh, here either today or in the next couple of days to, to find out exactly that. But at this point, um, I can't tell you, but we will be very interested there. In the back. <clears throat> Trey Ward, ABC7. Do we know just how fast that train might have been going? So how fast was the train going? The speed limit here, the maximum speed limit, is 70 miles per hour. So we're reasonably confident that it was not exceeding the speed limit. And as we download the uh, event recorder, in fact, that's going on right now as we speak. So I would say in the not distant future, we'll be able to tell you uh, what the speed was uh, on the train, and uh, we'll also be able to tell you when they started doing emergency braking. Yes, sir. Hi, Chris Coffey, NBC5. How important were all of the user-generated videos, people at the scene, showing the actual collision, the aftermath? How will that play into your investigation? So how important are user videos? I can't say enough positive about gathering all of the information that we have. If anybody's got a video from a cell phone or a security camera or anything like that, we want to get it because it'll give us a different perspective. Often we've got uh, a couple of cameras here in the town that got one angle. We've had some others that are looking at a different angle. There are a couple of uh, cameras on the station itself that show a different perspective. But somebody might be standing at a different angle that will give us just exactly um, the key bit of information. So good question. Thank you. And yes, that's why we want them to get in touch with us at witness at ntsb.gov. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Martin Tice with the Daily Herald. Can you uh, describe anything about what caused the fire and what happened with it? The question is, uh, what caused the fire? From what we know at this point, we believe that in the course of the impact, the, um, the, one of the uh, diesel tanks on the truck was punctured. In fact, maybe both of them. And if you look at the, the train, uh, right on the right side, just behind the engineer's compartment, you can see a smear of, of diesel fuel that didn't ignite. At least that's what we think it, it would be. But the, uh, the, the uh, fuel tanks on the truck were punctured, and then obviously it came in contact with something hot. Um, obviously the brakes on the train are going, and you've got hot engine uh, situations and so on. And that's what it, we think is what ignited the fire. So, yes, ma'am. Kelly Davis, WGN. I'm wondering if there's any more details you can share with us in regards to the three people who were inside that truck. Have they been forthcoming with information, cooperating with police, and your team? So the question is about the three people in the truck. Uh, we are going to be very interested to speak to them. As I understand it, the police have already had uh, considerable discussion with them. I think they have been reasonably cooperative, and uh, our people will be talking to them in, in significant detail. So that's, that's going to be key to understanding 
why the truck didn't move because initially there was some speculation that the white pickup truck that was in front of the, the box truck was blocking the, the, the truck to get off the tracks. That the video shows us that was not the case. The truck could have moved, it didn't. What other questions do you have? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you know how many people were in the cab car and how the people who were injured, the, the two passengers and the conductor and uh, engineer were injured? Yeah, how many people in the cab car? I believe uh, there were six passengers in the cab car, if I'm remembering correctly. And we believe that all of the uh, injuries occurred in the cab car because there doesn't appear to be any other damage uh, anywhere on the rest of the train. And with the exception of the impact point where the back end of the truck punctured the side of the cab car, um, there's really not much damage. Even at the point of initial impact, you can see where the, the truck and the cab car collided. It's relatively minor damage. It was the back end of the truck that caused the major damage uh, on the, the side of the, the car. And that's unfortunately what caused the uh, ejection of the passenger. Let's take one more question. Right. Yes, sir. Jim Goodis from WBBM Radio. First, if you could do us a favor for those of us who got here just as you were starting, if you could identify yourself again, of course, spell your name, all of that. Secondly, you, you've addressed this throughout, but I'm wondering if you can bring it all together, and that is, what is it, of, you know, with all of the video and all of the information you have, what, do you, what is it that you still need? What is it that will help you decide, you know, what happened here, what needs to change, what recommendations NTSB is going to make, and why it's going to take 12 to 18 months to come up with that final report? That's a lot of questions, sir. Uh, <laughs> I'll try not to make it a lot of questions. I'll, I'll, do, the, I'll do the easy one first. Uh, my name is Bruce Landsberg, L-A-N-D-S-B-E-R-G, and I'm the vice chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. It goes downhill after that. Um, when we are in a crash investigation, one of the hardest things that the investigators have to do is to not jump to conclusions because oftentimes you will go down a, uh, a blind trail and it's too easy to, to get into the wrong place. You know, I should let you answer this. You're doing a fine job. Oh, thank you. So um, gathering all of the witness information that we have, the cameras, uh, the eyewitnesses of which we have several uh, people standing alongside of the tracks, uh, fortunately, we have the engineer, we have the conductor, we have the three people in the truck. I think we'll get a very comprehensive picture of what transpired. We'll know exactly what was going on with the train because of the event data recorder that was undamaged. Um, it's in the back of the locomotive. We have the cameras uh, inward and outward facing on the uh, train, so we'll know what the engineer was doing. It's a little harder with the truck. We don't know if the engine of the truck was running, was it, was it stalled? We don't know that yet. And I can't, I can't and won't speculate on exactly what will happen, but uh, we will get to a very clear indication. As far as recommendations, uh, it's premature for us to talk about that. We have a lot of recommendations out already to the Federal Railway Administration, to BNSF, and, and those people to help them to manage these kinds of things. Grade crossings are a challenge, and particularly in places like this. Uh, the town is built around numerous crossings, so there's not an easy solution as to how to address that. We do have to raise people's awareness and drivers about trains and the fact that they, they move quickly and how to deal with that. So if there's anything that we haven't already recommended, we'll make a recommendation on that. And the reason it takes the time that it does is because there's a lot of information here and we want to make sure that we get it right. Thank you very much.